a real application. Uh, the Tafiti application is one which is a search visualization application. It's also a Silverlight app. But I ultimately, let me sign in. What's going to happen is I'm going to build sort of a stack of searches. So if you ever do searches and you're um, you want to remember what you remember what things were you searched for. You can see over here that I I did I did some searching on Zurich and here are my results. Here's some news and some news articles, and then also here's some uh, what is this this one Zurich stuff, and here's one I did some searching on Windows Live Messenger Library. Now let me sign into Messenger on this site. Notice I have to consent again for this site, and it lets me sign in. Once we get done signing in, then now I'm signed in. And if I click on one of these guys here, this was added. You can see who this was added by for our particular stacks. And let me sign out and sign back in. Let me get out of the page and come back in so you'll see what what it looks like for the automatic sign in. So we go to the page and now I'm logged into live so it's automatically signing me in. So I don't have to worry about doing that for the second time. The consent thing has already been taken care of. So let's do a new search for um, let's do a search on dogs. So we'll get a search on dogs. Let me create a new stack for dogs. And let's drag some of this content over here. And we'll say, let's find some pictures. Uh, this is a picture of a dog. At that point, I can log in by here. And then I've got this sort of set and ready to go. Now, let me open up the, let me open up this up in Firefox and log in as my other user and show you how this might work. And what happens is, we sign in here. The idea is if we have more than one user connected to the same time, then I can actually initiate chats from web, directly from web to web. Or if I have um, a stack ready to go, now notice this is the same stack we have from the other side, which is a, and you'll see that I have co-owners associated with this already. So if I come in here and I, uh, let's do a new search. Let's, let's add a dog search over here. For some reason, I'm adding dogs onto the same stack. Let's add it onto this stack. At this point, the feedy would like to send IAM to other shelf stack owners. So I've got these guys two hooked up together, and yes, I want to send them updates. So at that point, he's been sent that one. Let me go back to my other Tafiti guy and back to the WLML. And if he's connected up properly, then he should see the update to the WLML stack. Let me sign in again, make sure. There we are. Something didn't get hooked up the first time I signed in with the JavaScript. But now you can see here, it loaded up. See, here's the dogs that got hooked up and is dropped in. So now I actually have two users, one on each on a different site, or on the same site, but on different machines conceptually, and they're both connected and sharing. And, it, and even to the point that if I wanted to, I could create a, open up a chat window and start talking to each other from that point. Um, you'll see here, this is this guy, uh, he'll, here's the conversation that the last thing he sent me was the update of the stack. And even if I wasn't on the website, it would, if I was just logged into the desktop client, then it, would send, it could send me an IM and say, hey, this uh, my your friend is on this website. This is really interesting. Come have a look at it. Provide him the URL directly. Pull him into the URL, pull him into the web. Then both users are going to be on the website and chatting. So that is the uh, Windows Live Messenger library. Uh, let me show you what the code looks like for that just briefly. I don't 
have a um, it's a little more difficult to get this one to run. So I don't um blah. Scratch that. Edit that back here. Okay. So that is the so that is the Windows Live Messenger library. I do want to show you a little bit of the code to get that to run. Like I said, um, the code for this is all up on MSDN in the tutorial, uh, which will end up building basically that same full site. And this is what it, this is a uh, basically the same version here. If we look at the sign-in page, signin.htm, then you'll see we basically have a couple of frames for this is where the sign-in frame is going to go. Some user information, the, my name and my my status is going to go there. Setting the user status is that drop down box. So basically, it looks like the page we looked at before. And then some information about contacts and that sort of thing. But there's really not a whole lot going on here except the divs. Ultimately, all the work happens in the in the JavaScript and where we import the Messenger library right there. What happens is, on the load, you notice we call our script main. I'm just going to walk through the sign in process to give you sort of a feel for it. So we go to script main, which is here. This function, make it a little larger. Um, this function takes the sign in control out of the Microsoft uh, Windows Live Messenger library, attaches it to the sign in frame, and we're also going to pass into it. There's the privacy policy. So remember, we're on line 13. Oops. The privacy policy, and then the channel.htm file. The channel.htm file is just a very small 20, 30 line JavaScript file uh, that we provide to you, which is our cross domain communication mechanism. Because the Windows Live Messenger library is running in uh, our domain, and the web, your web page is running in your domain, we have to be able to make sure that that communication can, ha can happen without problems. And that's, this is our, our mechanism to that. If you want to understand more about that, there is a white paper on MSDN that talks about how it actually does it, but the idea is to provide a, a safe and secure mechanism for doing cross-domain communications. Now, what we're going to do is basically instantiate a control, uh, attach it to that particular div, and then attach a listener to the authenticated completed event. So the, the div will render the sign-in control if they're auto signed, if they're set up for auto sign-in, or the um, the users as soon as he clicks the sign in button, uh, or he'll, he'll get authenticated, then it comes up to here, and we'll get this authentication complete event happens. At that point, then we know what the user's identity is, and then we can hook up to the sign in complete button and then call sign in. So the auto sign in will happen here, and then from there on out, it's a matter of hooking up to all the right events um, and enumerating over the context list if we want to display those, attach to events to listen for when context change. And all of that happens automatically in the background asynchronously. All you need to do is connect to the right, the right events that you want to listen to and then respond to them. Um, and then you're able to manage all of those various pieces that we've talked about. 